the Royal Kurgan, undoubtedly an astonishing, highly unusual ancient structure. One of many such structures found within the local area, yet the Royal Kurgan the most impressive by far. Found within eastern Crimea, this incredible building, predictably, like many other miraculous, possibly pre-cataclysmic as yet unexplained ruins, which we so often cover on our channel, not only possesses features strongly indicative of a culture far predating the current academically attested constructors, but this impressive structure, like the many of the other structural relics found throughout the world, is claimed as a mere tomb. We hypothesize this is due to their inexplicable nature, revered by our more recent ancestors, and as such, selected burial locations for rulers of these more modern, well-studied residents of the area. With the Royal Kurgan being no exception, according to academic study, it was apparently created with the sole purpose of being that of a tomb, constructed for the ruler of the Bosphoran Kingdom within the 5th century BC. We postulate, however, that these structures were merely reused as tombs, subsequently becoming locations of worship for these once powerful individuals. Our claim that the Kurgan far predates these technologically challenged, academically claimed cultures is also strongly supported by architectural evidence found elsewhere on Earth, sharing unmistakable, compelling characteristics with other well-known ancient structures we have previously covered, which we postulated, due to the great antiquity of the structures, were undoubtedly surviving relics of a now-lost pre-Diluvian civilization. It is unquestionably an enigmatic structure, with its most unusual and also recognizable feature being the mysterious, almost unique shape of its stonework. However, most intriguingly, this uniquely shaped stonework is a feature also found within the fortress of Nimrod, located upon the southern slopes of Mount Hermon, located an impressive 1,300 miles away. We find the chances of this extremely unusual type of masonry being made and subsequently used on these separate structures a mere coincidence highly unlikely. It is far more likely, regardless of the extreme distance between the structures, that they were, in fact, built by the same people, a group of highly capable constructors currently ignored by academia. We find it to be a far more likely logical hypothesis that this mysterious group built the Royal Kurgan for an as yet unexplained purpose using stone shaping methods unique to them. Furthermore, as covered previously, just like Nimrod Fortress, located by New Earth Channel, there is yet another ruin built with these same easily identifiable blocks, found within the oldest foundations of the ancient ruins of Jerash in Jordan. This lost civilization's unique finish to their stonework, incorporated into each build, fortunately makes connecting these builds to the same constructors seemingly undeniable. And due to the fact that the fortress of Nimrod and Jerash alike feature this stonework at foundation level, officially recognized as the oldest portions of both sites, we can logically presume that the Royal Kurgan not only shares the same constructor, but also likely shares the same tremendous antiquity. What's more, due to the sheer size of some of the stones utilized within Nimrod, indicates that it is existing work, created using lost knowledge, thus built by a lost civilization. Who built the Royal Kurgan within eastern Crimea? The surviving foundation at Jerash in Jordan? Or indeed, the original structure found at Nimrod's castle? Were these structures built by the same, once highly capable, highly advanced ancient civilization? If not, why do they share such an unusual, unique style of stonework? What was the Royal Kurgan built for? When was it built? We find its enigmatic shape, construction technique, and indeed seemingly identical stone characteristics linking it to the other ruins of tremendous antiquity, each located thousands of miles apart. Highly compelling.
There are many unexplained ruins which can be found within Egypt. Who built the Great Pyramids? What was the true identity and purpose for the Great Sphinx? Countless mysteries still swirl around these enormous structures, and no matter how much academic study is pursued within this mystical place, an answer for how, and indeed why these monstrous feats were undertaken, remains unanswered. The reason for this gap in our understanding, we have come to hypothesize, is due to a paradigm of understanding the result of which being that we as a species can only recollect a fraction of our history. A case of global amnesia has beset our kind, and unless those with the ability to see through the fog of established and as such heavily researched areas of our history, we may never solve the most important question of all. Where do we come from? The reason for our growing, staunch belief in a lost history is only further compounded by the subjects we research, and indeed the seemingly impossible and as yet unanswered methods that an ancient, clearly once highly capable civilization utilized to achieve such remarkable feats of ancient engineering, and our next item of choice is of no exception. As mentioned, there exists a heavily researched and indeed unraveled history which can be archaeologically found amongst these truly impressive ruins. However, although we are led to believe that academia has a handle on the ancient lives of those who dwelled within these structures, there are many areas which tell a different story, and one must question why. Why is there such gaps of explanation? When we are told that much of what these groups undertook has been researched and understood since the time of Edward Carter. Why was the Valley of the Kings lost? Who, and indeed how, were the ancient pyramids constructed? Many of the things we are now under the presumption have been fully explored are merely rediscoveries, completely absent from the ream of writing and hieroglyphics later deciphered and read. The submerged city of Heraculon, for example. An entire ancient city, which not only clearly dates from the time of the pyramids, but was also submerged in an event we are yet to be informed of. The rediscovery of this site in recent times is yet another example that the attitudes of those who are granted access to such sites is misplaced, and what we thought we knew about the true creators of said sites is a red herring, a smokescreen, placed down by later, surviving, and due to these unknown events, proven by heavy research, far less capable, far more primitive a civilization, who merely re-inhabited such sites, allowing them to develop to a point where they were not only able to leave their own archaeological legacy amongst these ruins, but also to claim such intimidating works as their own. Such a reality, such a claimed illusion, would also have made them a perceived force to be reckoned with an opportunistic strategy that any critical thinking leader would have leapt at to not only preserve one's power, but to ensure the ongoing existence of their own kind. This posited scenario would also explain why the ancient city of Heraculon, and indeed the Sphinx, the Great Pyramids, the Colossus of Memnon, the unfinished obelisk, and so forth, remained undescribed within what is claimed as the builder's writings and why such incredible feats were seemingly silently undertaken. Any explanation as to how these sites were built, such as that of Baalbek over a thousand miles away, possessed Aswan granite columns many tons in weight, remains a mystery. For one can claim such works as their own, but an explanation as to how they achieved them would not be something they could provide. Who built the ancient city of Heraculon, indeed the entire plateau of Giza? Why is the city submerged underwater, and what happened to those who constructed such sites? It is a pursuit for answers which we find highly compelling.
Thank you.